Okay, to finish up the brakes, I'm gonna pull these two bolts out here and here, and um, I'm gonna put some Loctite on them, and then we are going to align them with the uh, rotor. So first of all, let's uh, go ahead and put some Loctite on those. This actually looks like it came with some sort of Loctite on there, but I'm just gonna put some, some, uh, some more Loctite on those threads just to make sure that they stay locked in there really good. I'm just gonna take that and put that back in there and I'm do that to the other bolt. Okay, so now I have the calibers loose uh, right now, but uh, I have some Loctite on there on both of the bolts. I had to actually uh, loosen the, the cable ties on here because it was interfering when I went to clamp this down uh, to make sure I got great alignment on my caliper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze the rear brake as hard as I can, nice, really firmly, as I lock this down, and this is um, eight Newton meters. I'm gonna lock this down, so I'm gonna snug that one. I'll snug this one. Back to this one. Here's on that one, and then on that one. Okay, so now our wheel should spin very freely without any rubbing on the brake calipers, on the brake pads, and stop well. So let's go ahead and do the fronts. Okay, now we're at the uh, front caliper, and again, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, blue thread locker, and I'm gonna put a little thread locker on these. Rub that around, make sure it gets all the way around the whole entire bolt. And I'm going to reinstall my caliper bolt. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other nut. Okay, so I have a thread locker on both of my nuts right here, and I have it loose enough so that it moves freely uh, on the post. So the caliper moves freely on the posts. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to squeeze the front brake. Uh, as hard as I can, nice, very firmly, so that it locks, it centers the uh, caliper on the rotor. And then I'm just gonna snug this down. And then I'm gonna come back with my torque wrench while I'm still squeezing. I'll put that down to eight newton meters. And I just confirmed that the wheel is moving freely. There's no rub on the pads. And that it breaks nicely. Okay, now we're going to set our initial measurement for our air pressure in our front fork. So I took off the cap here. And I'm going to screw on my um, pump that I use for my shocks. This is just basically what that looks like right here. Um, so we're going to screw that onto the shock. I went and looked online and it said for my for my weight, which is 160 to 170, I should be at 80 PSI. So I'm just gonna pump this up. Just a starting point. We're just gonna set our sag about 20%. So let's pump this up to 80. Just about 80 right there. Okay, so I got it up to 80. I'm gonna undo that. Then I'm gonna sit on the bike and check my sag. Okay, now you can see once I got on the bike and set my O ring to where my sag was, um, that came up to about 15 millimeters for me. So in the range, it says for me between 15 to 20 percent, which would be it's because it's a hundred millimeter. Uh, travel shock should be somewhere between 15 and 20 millimeters. So I think I'm going to leave it there for right now and then ride it, but I might want to let a little bit of air up, maybe bring it down to uh, 75 or so, but uh, let's leave it at 15 millimeters of sag. 
and now we'll do the rear shock. Um, I got this um, online. This is basically just a chart showing the different um, PSIs and SAG measurements. But you can get that at uh, the Fox website. Okay, now we're working on the air pressure for the rear shock. So I have my air pressure set up and I actually let all the pressure out. The reason I did that, I wanted to see what the bottom measurement was. So this is with the shock fully compressed without any air in it. So the measurement between the two, it would be um, the total amount of shock travel that is available in the shock. So uh, basically you can put a ruler up to that and it came up to about three and a half centimeters of travel. And so I went and looked at the uh, the little sheet that comes from Fox, and it said for let's see, so 32 to 38 millimeters of travel. I want my sag at 15 percent to be about five millimeters. So I want it to be between five and six millimeters approximately of travel. So um, the shock initially came with about 100 psi of uh, pressure in it. So I'm going to crank it up to around 100, and then I am going to uh, get on the bike and check the sag and then I'll come back and um, see if I need to adjust my air pressure from there. Okay so at 100 psi my sag was right here so um, that is about 18 millimeters of sag and I want to get it down to about five to six so I'm gonna crank my pressure up and just to keep experimenting and bring it up to 120 and see uh, where that brings me um, for my sag so we'll come back in a minute and and try that there's 120 right there let's try that okay so I went and uh, put 120 in and check my sag again here and now it looks like we're down to about 12 millimeters. So let's crank it up to 150 and we'll uh, come back and see how that looks. Okay, at uh, 8 p I'm sorry, at 150 psi, I'm down to, looks like about 8 millimeters of sag. So I'm going to crank the pressure up just one more time. Let's see if we'll go to 160. And we'll see how that does. Okay, now we got 160 psi, and it looks like I'm down to about. Uh, looks like about seven. So I'm gonna bring it up one more time, maybe 165 or one. So let's go to 170. Okay, this is 170 pounds psi. And I think that that's going to be about right. It's about five to six millimeters right there. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. 170 is my setting.